All right, here we go. Here's an update. So I've had in the last two days the plumber, the electrician, and the cabinet and countertop guy all come by and get scopes of work and estimates. So next week is going to start being really busy when the plumber and electrician come back to get the work done. In between now and then, I intend to take this stack of plywood and put it on that floor to strengthen it up before I do my hardy backer in here and start flooring. That's the next guy i got to get a hold of and see if my flooring is on its way. But since then I also took this arch, dropped it down. That will bring about to door height. You see it's about even with that door. That arch is down. And I've got just this flooring left to do and I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So I had them cut it into two foot strips by, you know, four by eight sheets cut into two foot wide strips. So that I can get it in the Suburban, but it also makes it easy to handle in this space. So, there's the mark for 8 foot long, there's the mark for 2 foot wide. And all I'll do is take that liquid nails and do big W patterns inside there. And spread it all around in there. Plop down the board, slam it tight to the joint there, and screw it all down. So that's what I'm about to do. Um, I chose CDX plywood, just simple basic grade rough plywood that we use for sheathing and decking and all that kind of stuff. I don't particularly need underlayment. I don't like underlayment. If it was my installation, I wouldn't do the underlayment. Um, I'd do just straight up plywood. I would have done one inch thick plywood with a tongue and groove on the edges and done that as my decking. But buy someone else's house, this is what you end up doing. So yeah, I'm going I'm to fill all this in. Um, Let's get started. this case I'm definitely going back for when I get to main flooring for the big tubes these small ones are you know I get one tube didn't even do the whole thing so not enough in one of these oh well I'll go through the small ones and I'll go get a big one Same thing I was doing before, taking two inch screws down here along a joist, so I sink those through the old subfloor and the new subfloor and tie it into the joists. On the other ones I use the inch and a quarters, and that way I'm just biting the plywood together. And what I'm noticing is it's not biting so well into this stuff, and I don't expect it only to get worse when you see the water stains where I get there. But all it has to do, the screws just need to hold until the glue sets which will pretty much be overnight. They'll be set up and ready to go. And uh, this will be fine. The other half of the reason I didn't want to do this style underlayment is because I don't know that I trust that plywood as much since it's been water damaged. But new plywood over top, I know I'm going to be strengthening it back up. Besides the fact, as I've said before, the next layer that goes on this floor is hardy backer. So there's still another half inch of floor build up in here. And the hardy backer being a cementitious product will help strengthen everything up nice and neat too. So, yeah, I'm going to cut it off here. I'll bring it back in when I'm done. Not much more to see than what I just did here. It's just simply putting the floor down and I'll overlap the joints. So I'll put an eight footer here and then cut there and I'll keep doing that. So I'm not have a, you don't want to continue the joint line in one place if you're trying to re-strengthen something like this. Even the original builder didn't do that. As you can see, they got joints for plywood here, but not here. So they stagger it like a brick pattern. And that way you're trying to get better strength in here. 
yeah, that means eight footer goes here next. I cut there, eight footer. Um, I'm gonna have spare plywood left over when it's done. I got more than I needed. <sighs> that pipe, I may be I'll have to wait for this section of plywood until the plumber's actually done. So that may not go in today, but I'll get all the rest of it done. So it's pretty much down and ready when this floor starts curing. These, this new plywood bonds to the old plywood and gives me a lot more strength. It's already just walking on this a lot more solid. But yeah, I'm going to cut it here. All right, there we go. All the plywood's down. I am leaving this one gap left. Simply because I gotta wait for the plumber to take care of that. Then I'll locate and cut the hole for the under under sink cabinet vent, save the box. I'll reinstall that after I've got all tile and everything on. Put it in place. Probably just glue it down. But yeah, put it in place, wait for the cabinet guys, but um yeah. So sometime next week the plumbers come in and they take care of that mess. And I'll put the last sheet of plywood down, but it definitely solidified the floor up. And for any places where I had larger gaps, I definitely filled up the gaps with construction adhesive. And I don't know if you, you caught earlier, but I was doing a bead in between the joints before I lay the next board down. So they're joined mostly to the floor, but also to each other. And that should give it good strength. It definitely solidified this floor up, liking it much better. The other thing I just pulled off was out here at the fireplace. The other layer of hardy backer I needed for this, so I rectified that miscalculation on my part. So now, thin set and tile, that'll bring it up to the level of the half inch hardwood that's going to go down everywhere else. So this is the extent of where the tile will be. Um, I've decided I'm not going to play with hardy backer for up this. I'm just going to sheet this whole thing in drywall. That way I can simply tile with uh, mastic. Just have to prime this when I prime everything else and that'll be good to go. But yeah, just looking forward to a whole crap ton more hardy backer to go in. So yeah, this entire space in here, everything past the archway to that door, all of that's got to get hardy backered. Um, I'm just debating whether or not where these water damages are, especially here. Obviously coming in from somewhere wet like this door or that door. You need a hard surface in this track area. You bring snow in. We live in freaking Rocky Mountains. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to go to the trouble of removing that subfloor. I'll put as many screws in as I can because that's this area. It's tightened most of it up. I'm hoping it'll kill me if after I put the hardwood floor down, I still got any squeaks at all. But it's just time and material, and I don't. I don't have either. So I'm gonna have to. Go like this, where I put a ton of screws in that space, and I'll probably do it right back through there, and then get the hardy backer on top of that, and the tile on back, and hopefully, yeah, I'll be doing, after the hardy backer, definitely doing some crack suppression barrier there, just to suck it up, make sure it doesn't settle or move, or, but yeah, the flooring adventure's only just begun. Well, yeah, that's, that's probably going to be the update for this week. Not too much farther, a little bit of stuff done, mainly getting other trades in for scope of work and take off and start working next week with the electrician plumber and get the cabinets on order. I got to check on my flooring, but yeah, it's still a big freaking mess. But the thing is, I think first thing next week, I can start cleaning up all of this, get all my tools stacked back out in the garage where they belong, clean all this up and get it ready for drywall after the electrician and plumber are done. So it's, we're just about at the peak where we hit a roller coaster and it starts going fast after that. Yeah, for those of you that care, for those of you that are family that are watching this, that's where we're at this week, how far we've come. Oh man, it just doesn't, it doesn't move as fast as I'm used to and that's the trouble is I'm used to being a real construction manager who has a whole crew doing this stuff that in an 8 to 10 hour day, they'll get done what I do in a week. But... When you're a one-man show like this, it's, you know, I guess that's some progress. I'll make it where I can. But yeah, I think the last thing I'll do today is I'm going to put the corner beads up here and put the first couple scratch coats of, of uh, <sighs> brain, brain fart um, joint compound on there. 
yeah, that's where I'm at for this week. Hope you enjoyed the update. Maybe something in here helps you if you're ever having to deal with an issue like water damage like this, or if you're wanting to switch from linoleum to tile. There's some steps in here that could probably help you out with how to do that and how to make it nice and strong. Because this, this is definitely way stronger than what they built it as after I'm done with it. I mean, they did floor staples. I've done screws down to the joists. I've done glue everywhere. This is a solid floor now. And that's the way I want it to be. I want this whole workspace area of the kitchen not to have a single crack, not to have a single squeak, nothing. And it's it's solid in here now. There are no no squeaks, no cracks, no nothing. So let's continue that on through when I do the, the rest of it all. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to stop talking and I'll let it, this video and upload it from here. Thanks for watching.